Hello everyone and welcome to the Books of Morgan. I'm Morgan and today I'm going to be doing a book haul. Now, I was going to do like a seasonal book haul, like a summer type thing, but these are all actually books that I bought during quarantine. So this is my quarantine book haul, so welcome. <laughs> um, it's been like, I think three months since I filmed my last book haul. I've accumulated 17 books since then. I've also gotten rid of like 20 books. So like there's room on my shelf. I don't feel that bad or at least I'm trying not to feel that bad. So um, yeah, I unhaul books a lot. You probably saw my unhaul um, that I posted on here, but I buy new books and I like to keep my physical collection to less than 200 books. I mean, I really try. Um, but maybe one day I'll have one of those amazing, like, fabulous libraries that you see in, like, Beauty and the Beast, but I'm not there yet in life, so this is what we got. <laughs> the first few books that I want to show you, um, are actually Book of the Month books, and I want to show you these books because I'm excited about these books, but I do feel like I need to put a little bit of a disclaimer out there that, yes, Book of the Month has, um, been very problematic. They have not been highlighting as many diverse authors. They've been blocking people on social media who bring up these concerns. And honestly, it's very disappointing because I love Book of the Month so much. Like, genuinely, like, I really enjoy their subscription services. I think the books that they do put out are really awesome. So to see all this drama unfold recently has been really disappointing. And I'm hoping that they fix their errors and they learn from their mistakes and I haven't canceled my subscription yet um, but I feel like I don't see any changes within the next month or two like I think I'll have to part ways with them because what they've been doing is really not okay and I don't stand for that so I'm gonna give them an opportunity to learn and grow from their mistakes but if I don't see any growth then I'm gonna have to cut ties I just I don't believe in severing those ties right off the bat because I don't think it's fair to point out someone's flaws and then not give them an opportunity to fix those flaws. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to be very cautious about them, but I do want to share the books that I've gotten from Book of the Month for the last three months because I have gotten quite a few here. So yeah. The first book that I got from Book of the Month was The Paris Hours by Alex George. This is an historical fiction novel set over the period of 24 hours in Paris during the 1920s. This is like post-World War I. It follows an immigrant or refugee and it follows the chambermaid to uh, Marcel Proust um, after he passed away. It follows, I believe, a writer and this father. In a way, they're all connected, and you don't really figure out that connection until the end. However, I did figure that connection out, like, from, like, the first 50 pages. I was like, all right, I see where this is going. This is a very short book. I mean, you can read it in, like, one sitting. It's, like, 200-something pages, um, so it is, like, a very quick historical fiction novel if that's something you're looking for. I did give it four out of five stars. I thought it was really um, well done. For me, like, the way that things were connected was just too predictable, but I think others might find that really... They might find that better, because, like, I know some mysteries make people anxious, so... I don't know. I think this book was good, although I think there's a few cliches here about 1920s France, like, Hemingway makes an appearance here, and other famous people from that era. Gertrude Stein is also in this. I think it would have been better if um, Alex George had just stuck with... Um, characters or people from the 1920s that we might not have seen because everyone talks about Hemingway and Gertrude Stein and all those people so it's like it's not really original but I mean okay if you want to be thrust in this world you will be thrust into it 1920s Paris like it does its purpose so yeah I give it four out of five stars but I'm not doing a re I don't know why I'm doing reviews but here we are <laughs> I also got Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book, oh my gosh, I love this book so, so much. Like, so good. This is a romance between two authors, Augustus and January. 
and it's enemies to lovers but then they kind of like bounce off each other ideas and writing and all that stuff and they're at this Lake Michigan spot vacation spot I mean okay so they're at these lake houses on Lake Michigan in Michigan and their neighbors and it's so good like I love enemies to lovers it's my favorite trope in romance books and this one is done very well um, if you need a summer read that's really cute and also fun and about books this is the perfect book like honestly this is the perfect summer read and everyone should go and get it because it's awesome I also got the book Normal People by Sally Rooney this is one of Book of the Month's older books, but I wanted to add it onto my um, boxes, and I'm so glad I did. Oh my god, this book is amazing. I bought it because of the hype, I'm not gonna lie. The TV show came out. This is a thing that's happening. This book is so good. It is a romance between Marianne and Connell. They meet each other in high school, then they go to the same college together, and it's their on and off relationship <sighs> in Ireland. It's so good. Like, I don't even know, like, what I would do without this book. It's so good. I just, my whole heart. Ah, this is, like, so good. And everyone needs to read it. I don't even want to watch the TV series now. I'm like, if I watch anything, it's gonna, like, ruin my images in my head that I came up with for this book. So I'm just, I'm not gonna touch it for now. I'll have to wait a while. So good. <laughs> Alright, the next books that I got from Book of the Month I have not read, but I am excited to read them. Um, I got Happy and You Know It by Laura Hankin. This is really outside my comfort zone. I think this is like a women's fiction novel, honestly. Or maybe it's romance. I don't know. It comes from Berkeley. But this follows a woman who is like a child's entertainer like she's like a children's musician and she gets hired for a lot of like kids parties by these elite moms in New York City and it's kind of like real housewives and I don't know like children's music combined and it's apparently crazy full of drama and I'm excited to read it but this isn't normally something that I would pick up so I am curious to know how I'll feel about it but I love The Real Housewives of New York City, so I'm hoping I get all the drama I need from this book. <laughs> I got another book that is really outside my comfort zone. It's a nonfiction memoir, which is not something I typically enjoy reading, but again, the hype got me, and that is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Um, I'm not really sure what this is about other than the fact that Glennon Doyle is this creative writer. She's also part of the LGBTQ community, so I think there's some stuff about that in here. Um, I've heard it's really sharp and witty and you can get a lot out of this book. Someone told me like you should have a highlighter on hand when you're reading this because there's so many good quips in here. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, I don't typically like self-help like memoir-y books because I'm like, I don't know, it just gets really preachy. So I'm hoping that this one offers valuable advice or just like valuable comments to life. So I am again looking forward to reading this and I couldn't not get it because the cover is stunning like oh my god I love the glitter I'm a sucker for glitter so wanted to get that even if I don't like this book I'm gonna keep this on my shelf because it's absolutely freaking gorgeous and the last book of the month book that I have received is one to watch by Kate Stamen London this is essentially the bachelorette but like a little bit different so it follows this woman who's a plus size girl and she's like the bachelorette and she has all these male contestants and she's really using the platform to like you know what is it to like bring awareness and bring attention to like different body types and different types of women out in the world so she's like i'm not gonna find love like i'm just here to like support my brand like this is i don't really care about finding love but then I think she does find love, so this is crazy of a whole book. So, I don't know, I haven't read it yet, but I love Bachelorette. I love The Bachelor. Okay, I don't know. I haven't loved it recently. Bachelor in Paradise last season was phenomenal. So, that's what I'm putting my money on. Like, I don't even care about <sighs> Claire, Crowley, whatever. I am very excited for Matt James. Like, hello. Yes, The Bachelor. 
let's skip Claire's season, let's go to Matt James. That's all I'm saying. But I am missing Bachelor Mondays and I would really like to read this book to fulfill that. Okay, the next few books I got from various bookstores. Um, so during quarantine, like I did want to support small bookstores because I know that they are really struggling right now with all of this. Um, I know that they're open pretty much now, but before it's like the only way that they could make sales was through online orders. So there's two bookstores that I did end up supporting um, during this time. The first one being Capitol Hill Books in DC. You basically fill out a form and they curate books especially for you. You give them a price of how much you want to spend and then they'll send you books. You can either do a mystery box or you can do um, like you know what you get inside and then they'll send it to you. Um, so I actually did the mystery box and I got four books but one of them I'd read so I passed it on to um, my boyfriend because I think he would really like it so <laughs> I gave him that book but um, yeah so I, I have the other three books that I got and I like basically told them I love romance, I love vampires, I love, you know, fantasy books and magic and all that stuff. So that's what I was feeling in the mood for. And they gave me The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. This is like the first three books in the series. I think the first one is An Interview with a Vampire, which is like a famous movie from the 90s, but it was actually written, I think, in the 70s. So this book was actually written in the 70s and then the rest of the series was um, created through like the 80s and stuff. So this is like classic vampire smut and I'm very excited to read it. I was not disappointed when I got this. It's a bind up so I really got three books a month so that's pretty cool. I also got The Witches of East Wick by John Updike. This is an historical fiction novel about witches I believe in England. This actually takes place during the Vietnam era in... Rhode Island. Random. Okay. I don't know what this is really about. I know there's witches in it. I know there's naked ladies on the cover. And I was pretty much sold after that. So, like, I'm excited for it. And then the book that they did give me that I already owned was Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. Um, I read that one. But they also sent me Children of Virtue and Vengeance, which is the second book to that um, duology. So I didn't have this and I'm wasn't really thinking I was going to read it, but now that I have it, I'm kind of excited about it. This is a YA fantasy series inspired by West African magic. It's so cool. I am very excited to read this. Um, if you're looking for a YA fantasy written by a black author, I definitely recommend this um, duology. It's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, this is the sequel to it. I heard it, it's not as good as the first one, but... We'll see. I also heard that Tommy Adeyemi actually sold the rights for it to become a movie, so hopefully we see something like that in the near future. That would be very cool. But yeah, this is the other book that I got from Capitol Hill Books. Another bookstore that I ordered from was Semicolon Books, um, which is the only black-owned bookstore here in Chicago. So I wanted to support them during this time and I think they actually like sold out of books like completely um, which is so cool. Um, a lot of people have been buying nonfiction books by um, black authors about race and stuff and I think that's really awesome. Um, it's just that I've actually read a lot of those books because I did my research on um, like slavery and on race in America during my four years in college. So I've read a lot of those books that a lot of people are starting to read now. Um, so I wanted to actually buy books by black authors, but I wanted to do romance books because that's what I've been in the mood for. So I bought these three books. <laughs> um, I actually read this one. So I got Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I actually finished this a few days ago and I enjoyed it. This follows Chloe Brown who has fibromyalgia and chronic pain. Um, so it kind of explores disability, and it's a romance between her and Redford Morgan, who um, is her superintendent, and he helps her kind of cross things off her list of things that she wants to do to, like, that she hadn't done before she was diagnosed with her um, disability and stuff like that. So it's cute. It's fun. The one thing I couldn't get past is that Redford Morgan, 
was a redhead and he had my la my name as his last name so that was just something I, I was just weird reading about I don't know that was just like a personal thing like I can't change the characters names but yeah whatever um so yeah it's cute it's quirky it's a fun little romance <laughs> I also got Real Men Knit by Quana Jackson. I'm actually in the middle of this book. No, I'm not even in the middle. I'm like 25 pages. I just started this like today. Um, this is about a girl named Carrie. She works at this knitting shop in Harlem and she works with these four brothers and they were adopted by the owner of the yarn shop. Her name is Mama Joy, but Mama Joy passes away. So they have to figure out what they're going to do with the yarn shop in Harlem. And then I think it's a romance between Carrie and one of the brothers who is involved in this business. So I just thought it was like funky and cute. Like I don't knit, but my cousin does. So Allison, if you're watching this, please read this book because I think you would find it endearing. Um, that's why I'm reading it. I've never seen like a romance book about knitting. So like, I'm trying it out. Also written by a black author, which is really cool. And she actually worked in the fashion industry, so she knows a lot about her textiles here. So that's pretty cool. I also got The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This is an enemies to lovers book. <laughs> it's my favorite trope. <laughs> Stop. And um, I haven't read this one. I haven't started it yet. But I think it's this woman, she's planning a wedding and then the best man at her wedding like ruined her wedding. I don't know, it was some weird stuff going on here. It gives me um, wedding planner vibes with like JLo and Matthew McConaughey. That's what I'm kind of getting from this. So, um, and then it's all like a cast of characters of color. So that's pretty cool. The next book I got was actually a gift from my amazing boyfriend. So thank you very much, Jackson. I really loved this book. And that was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is such a good romance book and I'm so glad Jackson bought it for me because I was like, I wasn't going to buy this for myself because I didn't think I would really care for it. But it is so good. Like, this follows Alex Claremont Diaz and Prince Henry. So Alex Claremont Diaz is the first son of the United States and Prince Henry is the Prince of England and it's their forbidden love and romance and it goes enemies to lovers because they hated each other at first but really it was masking their love for each other and all those suppressed like queer feelings they had for each other and I just loved this so much like the smut alone 10 out of 10 like ugh, and Alex and Henry are just my babies like I just want the best for them and I don't want anything to hurt them and it's so good and if you haven't read this book go buy it right now it's pride month go do it and this is the best book ever okay that's all I got to say about that okay the last um, few books that I have here are books that I got from Amazon and I know that Amazon is evil so please don't hurt me too much it's just it's convenient two-day shipping man I'm a prime Remember, like, I know Amazon is evil, okay? It's just books are really cheap on there, and I do feel bad about it, but I wanted these books. <sighs> I really am I'm the worst. I know it. I know. I know I'm the worst. But here we are. <laughs> okay, the first book that I got from Amazon <sighs> Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. It's like, I don't even want to read this book, guys. I don't. Why did I buy this book, you might ask? Because I've read every other Sarah J Mass book and I'm like, well, it's quarantine. I should have all her books. Also, my friend Jenna, my cousin Allison, and a variety of other people have told me I need to read this, but I'm not looking forward to it. It's 800 pages. It's new adult fantasy, or is it adult fantasy? Who the frick knows? Like. I'm no, I know I'm gonna hate it. Like, I just know I'm gonna hate it. So, I don't know why I bought this, but I have it. You know what? I should do a reading vlog of me reading this garbage. But I still love Sarah J. Mass, always and forever. It's like hate love. I, I love to hate Sarah J. Mass, but I also love to, I hate to love her. Ugh. Ugh I don't even want to look at this right now. Alright, on to more positive books that I got. So I also got a book for my book club. So this was our this is our June pick. I haven't started it yet, but 
I still have time. And that is The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. This is an historical fiction novel set during the Great Depression. It follows a British woman who marries an American man and they move to Kentucky. And she's one of those like library people. She like brings books to poor people in the Appalachia region and stuff. So I'm interested in this. I've never read a Jojo Moyes book. I know she's like a very well-known historical fiction and romance writer. So I'm curious to see how I like this book. It's not something I would normally pick for myself, but it is from the Reese Witherspoon Book Club, and I tend to like those books a lot, so I have high hopes for this. And the last two books I have are romance novels. One of them is The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. Morgenthaler? Morgan? Something. Books of Morgan. Okay, anyways, <laughs> this is The Tourist Attraction. This is an enemies to lovers romance set in Alaska. This is just honestly something I bought because I want to read The Simple Wild again, but not The Simple Wild again because I know how that book goes. So I want something Simple Wild-esque. Basically, I want a romance set in Alaska and it's enemies to lovers. So that's this. The guy like owns a reindeer farm or something and the girl is just like a tourist. I don't know. <sighs> I just, I want to read it. I want more Alaskan romance books. I don't know. I want to go to Alaska. The next book I got, and the last book that I got, is The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel. Another enemies to lovers romance, because that's all I freaking want to read. If it's not enemies to lovers, then I don't want to read it. Like, it's my favorite trope. Here I am. I accept it. But this follows, oh. This follows Leah and Jay. Their parents have like set them up to be married, like an arranged marriage situation, and they're not about it. They don't really like each other, or at least Leah doesn't like him, or Leah, or I don't know how to say her name, but she's like, no man, like I'm not gonna marry you. And then I think they end up working together and then they're like attracted to each other. Like I said, enemies to lovers. They're gonna fall in love and get married anyway, so I already know what happens in the end of this book, but I still wanna read it because I'm a slut for enemies to lovers. <laughs> I am who I am, friends. I am who I am. But thank you so much for sitting through this long haul. I am completely ashamed, but no, I'm not. <laughs> thank you so much for sitting through this very long book haul. I hope you found some books that you might be interested in reading. Um, comment some of the books that you've bought during quarantine. If you would like to see more from me, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!